Uh, I've been participating in last three events. The event has grown every year. Uh, thanks to the direction from the Honorable PM that we have to really make uh, Atman Nirbhar Bharat, especially in the telecom technology, which forms the basis for the digital India backbone. What is stopping you? As a nation, we've always been a services-led economy. Time will tell whether uh, we'll be number one, two in the next four years or five years or maybe even earlier. We have been a software company. We have the DNA of having built softwares for global markets. So that really puts us uh, as a front runner when it comes to leading the softwareization of the network. Hello and welcome to IMC 2024. I have a very special guest with me, Mr. Vimal Kumar. He's a Vice President and Head Network Solutions, TCS. Uh, thank you, Vimal, for taking our time. It's a pleasure to host you. Uh, uh, we will let's start with the, the IMC. It's the eighth edition of uh, IMC, and this time we have World Telecommunication Standardization Assembly too. This is for happening for the first time in India. Uh, how excited are you? I think this is uh, a big leap. Uh, I've been participating in last three events. The event has grown every year, and it has shown that we have the caliber as a country to really go uh, to the world standards uh, and compete with an MWC be it in Barcelona or be it in LA. Uh, I think overall event has really gathered the momentum. Mm -hmm. This time I hear a lot many countries are participating. Uh, this really combined with the WTSA gives us as a country as an opportunity to participate in standardization activities as well, okay. which India was not really uh, very actively participating till about three years back. Okay. Three years back we started TSDSI, we started some very serious participation uh, thanks to the uh, policies of the government and push from DOT mm -hmm. that uh, we started to move really fast on participation in the standardization event. Okay. This WTSA happening in India really positions us rightly that the second most populous uh, nation in the world is now getting a seat on the table. Mm -hmm. We are uh, able to participate and influence what should be the standard for a dense country like ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a, it's a very good very good move to put them together. Uh, and uh, it's only getting the momentum that we wish we should have got it earlier. Mm -hmm. How do you see India's role evolving in uh, shaping the global telecom agenda? See, uh, overall telecom market uh, has been really uh, pretty much controlled by the four players. Mm -hmm. uh, and all of us know which those four players are and uh, there was very little space for a fifth fund because the, the uh, 3GPP support to these four players was much stronger mm -hmm. and we as a nation were not participating uh, as a part of those uh, close group uh, okay. of set of companies. Mm -hmm. With us now uh, becoming uh, very very active, uh, we are able to push our weight, we are uh, thanks to the direction from the Honorable PM that mm -hmm. we have to really make uh, Atman Nirbhar Bharat especially in the telecom technology which forms the basis for the digital India backbone. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's imperative that we build this uh, internally, it's imperative that we secure our nation, uh, secure the digital boundaries of the nation, mm -hmm. while it is important to uh, really secure the physical boundaries, mm -hmm. I think digital big boundaries are becoming even and more and more important. Right. And I think it's, it's only uh, a step in the right direction, uh, though I would have really loved to move faster, okay. uh, but that's, that's where we are. So what is stopping you? Well, uh, quite a few things actually. One is, uh, as a nation, we've always been a services-led economy. Right. So building a product has really not been something that we have focused on. And thanks to uh, whatever old policies, uh, we always focused on becoming a service uh, delivery nation uh, at a national level. Now is the time when we have a fa fairly sturdy economic growth. We have all the uh, equations, all the stars aligning mm -hmm. for us to really participate in the product building roadmap. Mm -hmm. And hence, uh, participation in standard is extremely important. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's only uh, time will tell whether uh, we'll be number one, two in the next four years mm -hmm. or five years or maybe even earlier. Oh, I would, I would uh, wish that happens uh, soon. Uh, what are the significant trends in network solutions? We could say you specialize in that. Yeah, I think uh, one is Telcos really want a vendor neutrality, which means yeah. they don't really want to rely or lock into a single vendor from a technology stack provisioning perspective. Okay. So role of a system integrator which can stitch technologies from multiple vendors and bring it all together okay. is becoming very, very relevant. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and I see that globally uh, across uh, developed markets as well as developing markets. Okay. Uh, so that's one thing which is very common that a telco doesn't really want to lock into a single OEM. Okay. And hence uh, the need for a system integrator to lead all these initiatives. Mm -hmm. Second thing is uh, almost everything is becoming software. Right. Uh, which means uh, you really want to unlock from hardware. Mm. Uh, no custom hardware is something that is uh, recommended. Mm -hmm. And hence all the compute should happen on a gen general purpose, maybe cloud centric compute. Right. And all the intelligence should lie in the software. Mm. Which again puts us in a very unique position as TCS because we have been a software company. We have the DNA of having built softwares for global markets. So that really puts us uh, as a front runner when it comes to leading the softwareization for the network. Mm -hmm. And third, which is very common is almost, and that's common for every other industry as well, where we see AI really ruling the next right. generation of how do you build software. Right. So far in telecom, we've been building software which is essentially uh, API level integration and one component speaks to another component and we kind of stitch the interfaces correctly. But if you start taking data as a foundation and let machine learning find the patterns of that data and then take decisions, which is what most industries are really looking at, I think that is a third big thing which is really reshaping the uh, industry, telecom networks and the industry, so on and so forth. Fourth, uh, which is still very emerging, is we want telecom to be pervasive. Uh, so far, telecom has been pretty much on the land boundaries, right? right. Uh, you can't do a vertical uh, connectivity, non-terrestrial networks are very poor. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you go into the deep seas, only way you can communicate is sat phones. Yeah. Uh, so we want, uh, the 6G will define the standards for yeah. uh, collaboration between terrestrial and non-terrestrial communication, mm -hmm. which means one more dimension will get added uh, to the mobility, that it has to be pervasive mobility, mm -hmm. uh, be it on a far off places, be it uh, in the air, Maybe tomorrow we'll see uh, communication from uh, Earth to Moon. If people are in Moon, they, they should be able to make a cellular call, mm -hmm. is what uh, mm -hmm. direction we are heading into. Mm -hmm. It's really dynamic. Things are changing so fast. Yes. Uh, we are rollout of 5G is happening in India, and yes. we are talking about 6G. Uh, but uh, what is the kind of uh, challenges and opportunities uh, that we will have to face from shifting from 5G to 6G? Are we are we ready for as far as the infrastructure is concerned, networking is concerned for 6G? Actually, very interesting question. I, I don't know how well you've been tracking telecom, or at least what I've seen in last my 30, 35 years of experiences. Every odd generation has typically failed. Yeah. Uh, 1G, 3G, yeah. and probably now 5G. Mm -hmm. uh, when I say failed, it, it's not really failing in the uh, technology sense, but failing in the commercial benefits of it. So it lives, it's very short-lived. Mm -hmm. And uh, technically, I think it's a right step from 4G to 5G to 6G. There's no, no disruption per se on the technology track. It's just that 5G, people experience the simplicity, experience the uh, uh, the additional capacity and real timeliness of uh, what communication can deliver and that actually sets the pace for 6G. Mm -hmm. So for me as a technology person I would say ab absolutely no disconnect. Mm -hmm. It's just the commercial benefits of it something that really uh, telcos who invest significantly mm -hmm. in the odd waves have not really made enough money of that odd wave mm -hmm. uh, coming in mm -hmm. and uh, technically it's a, it's a very incremental step mm -hmm. uh, really building on the foundation that you would do in a 5G that will become, uh, start reaping benefits in 6G. So. Vibal Ji, technology is very changing. We all know that you are in technology. So, first of all, which gadget was used in your gadget? And now, which gadget has come to you? Oh, this is a very interesting question. In 1995, Nokia had a small phone. A small 5100 phone. Uh, text phone, uh, mm. you could do only SMS mm. and a uh, snakes ka game aata tha right, right. <laughs> that was I the remember. phone that uh, <laughs> we started to use as first mobile device mm. and today you use phones which are uh, all per pervasive can handle all kind of media mm. and we are actually in the process of building a phone which will receive uh, TV signals directly on the phone as well so oh there's wow. a technology that we are put up we put up on our uh, booth Okay. direct to mobile technology which okay. is uh, very uh, first first of its kinds in india mm -hmm. and uh, we are uh, a partner company of tata group has created the solution uh, right from the chipset of it mm -hmm. 
to the devices and the ecosystem around it. Technology are, good or bad, sir? Technology is always good. It's just that it's humans who, who become much more lazy after it. So <laughs> that I would blame it on humans rather than on technology. No, if you use children at home, they will get them. You study, you are more into phones and you are more into laptops. I think how people use it is, is again their prerogative. A uh, lot of kids I've seen, they are far more aware, uh, far more uh, well-versed. I think when I was uh, 21, I couldn't distinguish between India Gate and Delhi Gate. Yeah. <laughs> and today, my kids uh, at age of seven, they are able to say uh, a street in Los Angeles and a street in Vienna and they're able to compare. Mm. So I think it's what use you put it to is what matters. Mm -hmm. Some kids would really hang on to games mm -hmm. and that is sad. Uh, that is absolutely very unhealthy from a health standards perspective. Mm -hmm. But information availability uh, is, is a good thing. How you screen it mm -hmm. and how you limit it is, is something that really roots into the moral values that you uh, give in right. your family. And uh, right. that's irrespective of technology, that, that is a common denominator anyway. Right. Thank you, Vimal, so much for your time. Thank you. Just speaking with really you. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.